Assalamu alaikum viewers please like share and subscribe this channel links of pdf files used in this video are given in description so today is part 3 of a lecture series about nanomaterials and in this lecture we have discussed about characterization of nanomaterials with respect to sam tam atomic force microscopy particle size raman spectra photoluminescence and x ray photon spectra After studying the applications of nanomaterials we have seen that there are two approaches of synthesis of nanomaterials one is bottom up approach and second is top down approach after seeing both the methods used in bottom up and top down approach now we need characterization techniques of nanomaterials that how we will confirm by using analytical techniques that either our nanomaterial has been formed or not so these are the techniques number one is electron microscopes which include both types scanning electron microscopy or sam with energy dispersive x ray spectroscopy this sam uh, xr x ray analysis is used for surface topography up to 10 nanometer and composition like just the surface phenomena or what is happening on the surface of the nanomaterial we can study with the sam or scanning electron microscope second technique is called as another microscope electron microscope and this is called as transmission electron scope microscopy or tam uh, the surface topography is measured by sam whereas surface morphology is studied with tam actually the resolution of tam is up to 0.2 nanometer and more detailed information is obtained by tam third is atomic force microscopy and we will identify the individual surface atoms their nature um, then there is particle size analyzer uh, we will see what is the size of particles or we have generated next is the ft raman spectra this distinguish between single wall carbon nanotubes and multi wall carbon nanotubes and then there is photoluminescence spectra uh, the chirality or asymmetric determination is determined by this method and finally x ray photo electron spectroscopy and it gives us information about electron state of the elements that are present on the surface of a nanomaterial so by using these characterization techniques we get a different types of information about nanomaterials and this uh, information is necessary in order to exploit the properties of nanomaterials so here is the detailed diagram of electron microscope and uh, actually there is a very much less difference between the sam and tam so this is the general arrangement of a scanning electron microscope these electron microscopes what they are doing actually the they bombard the surface of the material to be analyzed with electron beam and this is the electron gun and it throws electron beams then by using anodes and magnetic materials these beams are focused uh, on some specimen and then after diffraction from these specimens these electrons are sent to the electron capture devices and then that information is sent to the scanner so in this way image about the surface in case of sam and image about the internal structure of the material to be uh, examined is created so in this way both sam and tam have information about the nanomaterials almost the instrumentation between sam and tam is same the components of the electron microscopes are almost same but the phenomena or the working principle is slightly different so sam creates an image by deflecting reflected or knocked off electrons from the sample surface it scans the surface of the sample and collects the scattered electrons whereas in tam or transmission electron Uh, microscope usually the transmitted electrons means the electrons which are passing through the sample are used to create an image so it provides valuable information about the inner structure of the sample including crystal structure morphology and the stress so here is the example of two images this is the sam image or scanning electron microscope image whereas this is the tam or turning in electron microscope image here we are seeing the surface morphology of different nanoparticles whereas here we are seeing the cross section or even the inner structure of the 
substrate or substance which is placed under the microscope. Next characterization technique is called as atomic force microscopy or it is also called as AFM. It is a powerful tool for imaging and analyzing surface at the nanoscale. The working principle of this is that it uses a sharp tip as this is the sharp tip which is placed on the sample which is to be analyzed and when this tip is scanned very close to the sample surface within a few angstrom of the sample surface repulsive or attractive forces develops between the atoms on the tip and those on the sample the cantilever this is the cantilever shaft is bends due to these interactions and this bending is indicative of the tip sample interaction force here is the slight uh, animation of atomic force microscopy so here we, we are seeing that the cantilever is moving on the surface of the material and the laser light is then reflected at different angles on the detector and then this detector is making a graph as shown in the figure the graph is in the form of x y form so whatever the pattern that is drawn on the surface of the material is drawn in the form of graph in the chart recorder now the nanoscale tip is attached to the cantilever forming a spring like structure as the tip contacts the surface the cantilever bends and this bending is detected using a laser diode and a split photo detector so we are seeing here that this is the light beam and this light beam then moves due to the movement of cantilever and it is reflected back onto the photo detector then this photo detector is attached to the control feedback loop and which is attached to the scanner so in this way this movement on the tip it is uh, amplified by this cantilever and the surface of cantilever deflects the light beam on photo detector at different places and this photo detector is attached to the controller feedback loop and in this way a whole image is created by using this technique next this is the working principle of particle analyzer and it gives us information about the particle size so it is very basically simple technique in which we are using a laser light and this laser light is subtract with the particles these particles are coming from this direction towards this direction so as the particles collide with the laser light the laser light is deflected and if the particle size is small then it is deflected at a greater angle however if the particle size is large then the light will not reflect it at an angle so greater the angle smaller is the size of the particle so in this way we are seeing here a various patterns so the number of patterns indicate the quantity of a particle of a that particular size so uh, it means smaller size will have a greater angle of deflection of laser light so in this way we calculate different particle size of nanomaterials next characterization technique is called as ft raman spectra or fourier transfer raman spectra this technique is very much similar to ir spectroscopy the basic difference between the raman spectroscopy and ir spectroscopy is that uh, the molecules which are inactive in ir actually can be studied by raman spectroscopy like the molecules which are ir active will be raman inactive whereas the molecules which will be ir inactive will be raman active so both these techniques are complementary to each other uh, you know in the ir spectroscopy the basic uh, principle of uh, ir spectroscopy is that there must be some dipole change in the molecule if we want to have a signal in ir spectroscopy but if we don't have dipole change then that those molecules will be studied in raman spectroscopy it is very simple in principle like that we are using excitation laser for the vibrations or inducing vibrations in the molecules and as a result of which there are three absorption lines this is this is the line which is less in energy is called as stokes line this is the line which is getting more in energy is called as anti stokes line and this is the intensity of the line which is exactly 
as we are uh, expecting so in this way the ir inactive molecules uh, are also studied by this raman spectroscopy and uh, <clears throat> in nanomaterials usually this technique is used for identification of single wall carbon nanotubes to multi wall nano carbon nanotubes next technique is called as photoluminescence spectroscopy and photoluminescence include both fluorescence and phosphorescence actually uh, in this technique the molecule is excited by absorbing energy and then it radiates back is this energy in the form of fluorescence and phosphorescence if the transition towards ground states occurs immediately then that technique is called as fluorescence however if the release of the energy in the form of light takes place after some time then that is called as phosphorescence or in other words immediate emission of light after absorbing energy is called fluorescence whereas delayed emission of light after excitation is called as phosphorescence so in nmr spectroscopy uh, in order to have information about chirality of the carbon tubes we uh, use actually the photoluminescence spectra as analysis tool last but not the least technique which is used for characterization of nanomaterials is called as x-ray photoelectron spectroscopy so in this technique actually we are using again x-ray as a source of electrons and these electrons are striked on the surface of the material which is to be analyzed and then uh, here on the surface the electrons are excited and then they come to the ground state and they emit the electrons these electrons are called as photo electrons and then these electrons are passed through the detector to determine the uh, energy of these photo electrons so by measuring the binding energy of these photo electrons we can have information what type of electrons are present on the surface of this material or what is the atomic structure of this material or even we can say either the material on the surface is in which electronic state or we can say that we ha can have information about the ionization state or the oxidation state of the material that is present on the surface of a material so this is the way we are using x-ray photo electron spectroscopy in order to characterize the surface uh, atoms of the nanomaterial so these were all the te characterization techniques that we are collectively using in order to have information about the nanomaterials whenever we have information about the surface phenomena and what is the nature of materials present on the surface of our nanomaterial then we are able to exploit this information to make a very useful applications from these nanomaterials. So this was all about today's lecture. I hope you have well understood this lecture. But if you have any question, let me know in the comment section. I will respond as soon as possible. Okay, thank you. Allah Hafiz.